What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I got another video for you this week on the little street truck. We're trying to get rid of that one tire fire so we can actually do a legit burnout with the little truck. So in order to do that, we're gonna replace the rear end and we bought a Detroit True Track differential unit that's going in that is right here. So we picked this up from Quick Performance. It was just shy of $500. I called them up, it was super easy. Told them my truck, the model and everything. And they told me exactly what I needed. So it made it super simple for me. This Detroit True Track comes with carrier bearings. So make sure you guys be careful with these because they can fall apart really easy. And then on top of that, we ordered us a new differential cover. So I'm super happy for that because it has a fill and a drain plug. And that differential cover was right about like 160. So we have like maybe 700 bucks shipping and taxes and everything wrapped up into this rear end that we're gonna do. So once we do do this, I definitely foresee some type of track bar that we might build ourselves or buy one online install so that way it can prevent wheel hop. We also got a roll cage in, it's in that pile of junk right there. So I'm not sure when we're gonna install that, but that'll definitely be coming up. And if you love the content, please drop a like and a subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And if you are looking to do the same modification I'm doing, as always, I will have a link to the products in the description below. First thing we're gonna do, jack the truck up, put it on jack stands. We got some 12 ton jack stands underneath it right now. And then we have to pop the wheels off, brakes off, the rotors off. Then we can take the diff cover off and start draining the fluid out. All right, so now we have our ring gear off. Definitely want to inspect it for any cracks or nicks. And now if you were changing your gearing, like these are 373 gears, the white truck has 410 gears. If I wanted to change these to 410, you'd have to change this with the ring gear and the pinion gear, which is still inside the diff right now. I am not gonna change that out. I'm gonna keep the 373 gears. But we do have to go for a drive. One to stop at my parents' shop because my 20 ton shop press is there. And we're gonna have to use that to press on the carrier bearings. And then I'm also gonna have to stop at the store because I'm going to buy new wheel bearings. It's one of those things while we're there, we might as well replace it just so it's brand new. And so later down the road, it doesn't end up start throwing metal shavings into the differential. And we still have to buy our differential fluid. So per the manual by True Track, it states that it does not want synthetic fluid and the least amount of additive in the fluid is the better. So we got the white truck warming up back there and let's go for a ride. You hear that slight little whine? It's a fuel pump. So we're probably gonna have to change that soon. Uh. <clears throat> And over here is my nephew's truck, pretty nice little truck for him. And over here is my project vet. So you guys probably have not seen this at all. This actually, I've had this for three years now. It's been in the background. Um, I bought this thing wrecked. Um, so this is gonna be one of the future builds on the channel. It don't look like much, but I have put a lot of work into this thing because that whole, whole front frame had to be replaced. So we have a lot of big plans for this thing. So that will be uh, a couple months down the road. All right, we gotta move some junk around. Here's our press. Let's get these bad boys pressed on. So we are now back at the shop. We have our bearings pressed on. We are about to mount our ring gear onto here. And we did stop at the store, picked us up some AEW 90, and it does call for in the manual that it is a non-synthetic and it has no additives. And also since we have it all torn apart, we are going to replace our axle shaft wheel bearings and we got brand new seals for those as well. 
All right, so we now have just set the rain gear on here. We have these holes lined up. Now we're gonna get all these little bolts in here, get them hand tightened. And this flange on the true track back here actually gets a little fatter. So once you slide that ring gear up, it's gonna stop. And it's actually gonna have to be pressed on. Um, one option is to use the shop press, which I had left the ring gear here. So that's why we didn't do it at my dad's shop. But the other option to put this ring gear on is to just hand snug these all up, hand tighten every single one. And then you're gonna go through in a crisscross pattern, kind of like tire lug nuts, and you're only going to turn each bolt half a turn. So you're gonna do this one half a turn, half a turn, half a turn, all the way around, and that's one complete rotation, and then you are going to do another complete rotation all the way until that ring gear is perfectly seated, so that way it pulls it up nice, tight, and evenly. Then you're gonna pull one bolt out, run red torque stripe in, tighten it all the way in, pull the next one out, red torque stripe, all the way until all of them have red torque stripe, and then you are going to torque them to spec. So it's a little bit of a long process, but let's get started. So we decided to change the wheel bearings and axle seals since the wheel bearings did have some wear patterns in them, which they were probably the factory ones, which have 120,000 miles. Since we're putting the new Detroit True Track in, might as well change the wheel bearings and the axle seals now, so that way it doesn't go out later down the road or possibly cause uh, metal shavings to get in the differential. I could have went to the local auto parts store, used the Rena Tool program, but this isn't the first time I could have used all these tools, so I figured I might as well buy them, add them to the collection, so that way the next time I need them, I'll have them and can use them right on the spot. Well, we had to order all these online. We found some pretty nice kits. We are about a week behind schedule, no big deal. Truck's just been sitting there. That's why it's always great to have an extra vehicle as a daily driver. So we have a nice slide hammer that we picked up. This slide hammer is what we're gonna be using to pull the wheel bearings out. And then we also have a nice rear axle bearing service set, which these are used to attach to the slide hammer. And these will be what's pulling that wheel bearing out. So you'll slide it in there like that, fatten it out. Tighten this up and then you'll be able to pull it out with a slide hammer. And the next kit we bought is a 10 piece bearing brace and seal install kit. So it has a lot of different sizes that we can use. They slide on the end, hold on with a bolt, and that way we can use this to pound the bearing into the axle tube. These two kits weren't too expensive. The slide hammer was pretty expensive, but I could have definitely used these kits quite a bit uh, over the last couple years. I will link these in the description below if you are also interested in these kits. So this goes in here. Oh, and then it grips it. And it fattens out. Now that we have our wheel bearings and our seals installed, we're going to take our axle shaft, wipe it down a little bit, make sure it's nice and clean, and then we're going to take some wheel bearing grease, and then we're going to smear it all on this edge right here where that surface and the wheel bearing meet. All right, we're going to let it sit just right there until we finish the true track. Welcome back. So this is the part of the show where we reflect on our life choices because I just made a poor one. So obviously, as you saw, I just snapped that bolt off. What happened was, I'm going to tell you real quick. So if you do like doing maintenance on your own vehicles, I would suggest getting a set of service manuals. And I'm not talking about those little Hanes, the little 40 page ones. This is book one of five just for this truck. I also have a whole set for the Corvette as well. They're very helpful if you use them. So I looked in the manual for the bearing cap torques and it was 136 foot pounds. Right away I was like, wow, that's a lot of torque on that bolt. There's no way it's 136 foot pounds. Not believing the manual, I looked it up online. Also 136 foot pounds, still didn't believe it. So I double checked myself. So sometimes you need to triple check yourself. I went, okay, 136 foot pounds, let's go. Got it to about 115 foot pounds, snapped it. I just made a big mistake because when I looked it up in the manual, I was looking under a 10 and a half inch differential. In my head, I read a 10 bolt differential. The differential I have in my truck is an 8.6. So it's definitely a lot smaller than a 10 and a half inch differential. Those torques are drastically different. 
So just something to remember, we always make mistakes and nothing ever goes to plan. This was supposed to be a five hour job. Well, I decided to change the rear axle bearings and seals while I didn't have the slide hammer for that. So I had to wait about a week. That put me a little bit behind schedule. Now we just snapped that bolt. Now we have to try to remove it and then also go buy a new bolt. So that's gonna put me back another day or two. So just remember, always have patience and always triple check yourself sometimes. That bolt is in a really tight area. So we're gonna see if we can get a pair of vice grips on it. And if that does not work, we're gonna try to weld a nut on the top of it use a socket to get it out. And if that does not work, we're gonna have to try an easy out kit where we drill the center of it out and use a reverse threaded little stud to uh, try to hammer that in and turn it at the same time and pull that stud out. Worst case scenario, if that doesn't work, then we're junking the whole truck. Oh, hopefully I didn't mess those threads all up. No way, dude. Yo, those threads do not look bad at all. <laughs> oh my gosh, I wish I would have tried that yesterday. Oh, wow. Honestly, never been that lucky with removing a broken stud. Ever. We are finally cruising right along. We have our four new bolts. Those are installed and torqued. We made sure that we did not mix up our two bearing caps. These bearing caps and the shims have to stay on the same exact sides and make sure that they're in the same exact positions. You don't want them flipped one way or the other. That's why we marked this whole side with paint markers and dimpled them with a center punch. We put the truck in neutral, rotated the true track over, and then we were able to shove the axles in. We put our little C-clips holding the axles in and now those do have a little bit of play and that's what we're going to utilize this new spacer for. So the spacer is just going to slide up inside there and that's going to keep the axles from sliding in and out. Now we're going to put this little plug in here and we're going to use our snap ring pliers to insert the snap ring. Just like that and that should freely spin. Now we can install our new differential cover. We'll lower it a little bit closer to the ground so that way the truck is more level and then we'll be able to top her off. Now we're about to install our new differential cover. This is made by TA Performance. It's a T6 aluminum cast differential cover, also known as a Grindle by that company. This thing is pretty stout, pretty thick. It does have a reinforced housing and a crossbar that holds the load bolts. Now some of you might have never seen this before. It does have load bolts with jam nuts which go through to these contact points right here on the inside. You torque these load bolts, which make contact with the bearing caps. And the purpose of that is to prevent bearing cap deflection under severe loads, which in turn will greatly reduce or eliminate bearing cap failure or fatigue. But the only bad thing is that they sent American or the SAE size bolts and the bolts that go into my differential are metric. So we had to go to the hardware store and pick up 10 new metric bolts. And those bolts were an M8 by 1.25 thread and they were 40 millimeters long. We are now completely finished with the differential. Everything went great. We finished this modification probably about three weeks ago, so we've given it a lot of time to drive it, test it out. The differential performs great. I'm super happy with it. I mean, even on a full wide open throttle pull from shifting first to second, it'll trip both tires. It definitely really gets off the line a lot faster now. And I've already drifted a couple turns with it, which is pretty awesome. I wanted to get you guys some great footage of doing some donuts and stuff like that. 
try to get this video a little exciting for you guys. But we actually ran into a little issue. So a couple days ago, we started having some idling problems. The math sensor is going out. So we got to buy a new math sensor. So uh, it kept wanting to put more fuel in, more fuel in, and it was running really crappy. It kept dying on me coming up to some stoplights. Had the tuner come over and we ended up changing it to a speed density tune. And we do not have the AFR gauge fully hooked up inside the cab. So uh, we are not 100% on the fuel tables for wide open throttle. So I don't really want to get on it right now until I finish installing the AFR gauge or get a new map sensor and we can switch it back to the regular tune. I promise I will get you guys some of that content. And if you are still watching up to this point, I really appreciate it. I hope this video has helped you out or kept you entertained for a little bit. I just spent the last couple hours buffing and polishing the body panels. So we did both fenders, we got the door, so we're about to do the back bed right now. We did the tailgate already. Um, the hood's pretty dirty, but we're getting everything prepped right now, clay barred and everything clean, buffed, polished, so that way we can wrap it. We already have all of our wrap materials inside here, so uh, this is definitely going to be interesting for me. I've never wrapped anything, so it's definitely going to be a fun time. Um, let me know in the comments what you think the wrap is going to be, because I definitely don't think you're going to guess it, but we're going to try this out, see how we like it, and everything goes well. Then we're going to wrap Betty White, and that one for sure is going to be an obnoxious color. If you do have any questions, just put them in the comments below. I try to get back to those comments pretty frequently. If you are interested in any of the products I use today, I will have them with a link in the description below. So if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Please hit that subscribe button. We just hit 1,200 subscribers, which is awesome. Another huge milestone because we just hit 1,000 subscribers not long ago. Thank you for all the support, guys. I really appreciate it. Stay tuned for some new content. Hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll catch you later.